Yeah, I think it's great to consider how this, how this training works. Um, and the first step is just to be um, acquainted with the terminology that we use here. And um, there's open intelligence, which is any intelligence that you can identify right now. Any intelligence you can identify right now. What's looking through your eyes, what's hearing these words, it's feeling yourself sat in the chair, this capacity to know. Now this is open intelligence, it's naturally present. You don't have to go anywhere or do anything for that to be the case. And then we have what we call data. And data is a term that we can use just to simplify all of our experience. So any thought, any emotion, any sensation in the body, any experience at all, we can just call data. And all of this data is just continually streaming. Our experience is a stream of data. And a, perhaps a helpful way to look at the way that this training works is to look at the way that conventional education works. In conventional education, we were trained and educated to focus in on all of the ever-changing descriptions, all of the data, the thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences. We were trained to focus in on them, label them, and to try and build a reality and an identity based on all of these ever-changing descriptions. And, and how did we learn that? How did we have that education? How did that work? Well, we were surrounded by a society of people who were also focused in on all of the descriptions, emphasizing all of this different data, and trying to build a reality and an identity out of it. We watched media, films and TV and websites on the internet that were focused in on describing, trying to fix in place all of this data. We took short moments of labelling and naming this data. How did we learn what anything was called? It's a process of repetition. How do you learn your own name? You, you hear it repeatedly. How do you learn what this is. It's a chair. It's a chair. It's a chair. Short moments repeated many times. And then there are special trainers that we've had in our life, people with particularly strong descriptive frameworks that we've listened to. And we've taken on board their descriptions and their opinions and their ideas. So the way that this education works here in the Balanced View Training is exactly the same. Except now we're surrounding ourselves with a society of people that instead of emphasizing the data, all of the descriptions, are emphasizing the open intelligence that is always at the basis of the descriptions. And how do you do that? You do that in exactly the same way that you learn to name and focus in on all of the data, one short moment at a time. So it's just one short moment of relaxing the need to try and analyse and describe and name and understand everything. This constant effort to try and somehow gather together all of the descriptions and make sense out of everything. You know, that effort to try and somehow hold it all in place. And there's such tension in that approach. It was always tense because the descriptions were always changing. So to try and hold it all in place was a, a never-ending game. And so in a short moment we just relax and allow all of that, that stream of data just to be however it is. And there's an immediate sense of relief there. Because we're actually giving up doing something that's impossible. And when we allow the descriptions to be as they are, there's this sense of openness. There's this sense of spaciousness that perhaps we hadn't noticed before. Or if we had noticed, then the noticing was very um, infrequent. And the way that we learn to 
name and label all of our descriptions, our thoughts, emotions and sensations, was by reading and writing about them. And so we do exactly the same here. It's exactly the same educational process. We have a whole range of incredible texts that will do nothing but point you back to the fundamental nature of reality. They will do nothing but evoke this instinctive recognition within you. So it's a very simple process. By spending times, time with these texts, time with the community of people who are also making this choice to emphasize open intelligence rather than only the descriptions, by taking short moments of allowing yourself just to relax and recognize open intelligence, it just naturally becomes more and more obvious. And then there's a trainer. A trainer is somebody that will only point you back to your own beneficial potency. Now beneficial potency doesn't mean only having beneficial thoughts or what we think are beneficial. It doesn't mean that suddenly we only love everybody and we don't hate anybody. It doesn't mean suddenly that our mind is really calm and tranquil. It means that regardless of the flow of data, our capacity to show up in each situation in a way that will be of incredible benefit to ourselves and everybody there is what shines through. And sometimes, because we've been trained so hard to focus on all of the descriptions, particularly the ones about ourselves, which in my case were mostly negative, it can be very difficult to see this beneficial potency for ourselves. So the educational process is really simple, but it does require participation. If you're not participating in this educational program, you won't get the benefits, you won't get the results. It's as simple as that. So everything is here for you to try, for you to test out and to see how it works for you. And, and that's what I did. I came to these open meetings and at first a lot of what was being spoken about, it, it didn't really make sense to me. But while I was in these meetings, I had these glimpses of this spaciousness, of this openness of my intelligence. And that was very attractive. So I, I kept coming back. And gradually over time I began to relax and allow myself to take these short moments in, in different situations. And through taking these short moments I began to recognize for myself that whatever was appearing, whatever I was experiencing, whatever data was shining forth, was inseparable from the natural presence of open intelligence. I couldn't find a single experience or a single datum that had a nature separate or independent from open intelligence. And I'd been focused in on all of the descriptions the whole while ignoring the fundamental nature of all of my experience. And when you're missing this crucial piece of the puzzle, and it's impossible to make sense out of life. It's impossible to make clear, powerful decisions because we're focused in on all of the ever-changing thoughts and descriptions. By allowing those to be exactly as we are, we open up to our own beneficial potency. And I've seen for myself, the more that I participate in this training, the more I immerse myself in the Four Mainstays, then the more effortless and the more natural that way of responding becomes. But it's such a gentle process. So if I suddenly find myself acting out on my anger or shouting at somebody and, and then there's this rush of embarrassment and guilt and pain and all of this flush of energy in my body and everything that happens after that situation there is your opportunity to recognize open intelligence. You always get a second chance with open intelligence. This is the gentleness and the, the love that we're introduced to here. And slowly, gradually, I saw that I did have the capacity to take responsibility for my data, to take responsibility for recognizing it as inseparable from open intelligence. 
And as that capacity was trained up in me, then that capacity to respond in a way that really would be of most benefit to myself and everyone in, a, in each situation became more and more obvious, much to my great surprise and delight. That was way beyond anything that I'd imagined for myself. My life had been about surviving and having fun. And now it was opening up to something much greater. Really seeing what I was capable of as a human being. And I know that if I can do this, anybody can do it. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. And so all that's required is just to continue showing up. And you'll find more and more that open intelligence becomes obvious amidst the flow of your data, however that looks. And very gently the emphasis shifts from only focusing on the descriptions to recognizing the inseparability of all of this grand display from open intelligence. All of the data are the beneficial potency, the dynamic energy of open intelligence. And once we allow them to be as they are, allow them to self-release, then this beneficial potency is naturally expressed without you needing to do anything. That's because it's innate. So all of this desire to be of benefit, I'd always wanted the best for myself. And that's kind of obvious, isn't it? I'd always wanted the best for the people that I love in my life. Well, that, that's kind of obvious too. But this is actually incredible. This shows how innate this desire to be of benefit is. What I discover when I allow all of the data just to flow on by, just to stream effortlessly through, then that desire of benefit is coupled with a clear discernment and a skillfulness in how I want to use my mind, my body, my speech, my qualities and my activities. And very naturally that shifts and opens out. The self-concern, the obsessive self-concern just relaxes one short moment at a time. And there is this laser-like discernment of seeing exactly what I want to do, what I want to say, what I want to spend my time doing that will be of most benefit. So this is the, the radical revolution that is spoken about here. Now this transforms everything in your life. It's transformed everything in my life. All my relationships, my relationship with myself. There's more and more spaciousness, more and more ease, more and more opportunity to be of benefit. And that's how each moment is, is greeted. And that comes about just by participating in the Four Mainstays. It's like magic. It's the same magic where the world that we see all around us suddenly took shape from when we were a baby, just completely wide open, without any ideas at all. Gradually learning to name things. Now the magic that we're recognizing includes all of that data naming. We don't have to get rid of that. Instead we have this broad perspective on all of the data. This overview on all of it. Seeing all of it from the top of a mountain. No longer a victim to the descriptions, but a master of the descriptions. Extracting the power from all of them and seeing how that power can be used to be of benefit to all. This is the power of our mind. And if this is what interests you, then you're in the right place.